I didn't even know there were any of these. I'm your host Yusuf and these are 10 human crossbreeding experiments you were never supposed to know about. And I sure as hell wasn't supposed to know about them. Make sure to subscribe and ring that bell to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Anyways, let's just jump into it. Number 10, monkey humans. An international team of researchers added human stem cells to macaque monkey embryos and watched as they survived and multiplied as one. The scientists effectively created genetic chimeras, a term borrowed from the mythical monster to describe one organism with genes from multiple individuals. Juan Belmonte, a professor at the Salk Institute and co-author of the study, insists that this is not about creating a full-grown chimera with human and animal traits. Our goal is not to generate any new organism, any monster, he told NPR. And we are not doing anything like that. We are trying to understand how cells from different organisms communicate with one another. Sure, sounds like a cover story to me. He adds that the discovery could lead to better understanding of human biology and diseases, as well as more effective human chimeras involving less similar species that perhaps could lead to animals being used to grow organs for human transplant. Belmonte and his team injected 25 human stem cells into macaque embryos taken six days after fertilization. Human cells were found growing inside 132 of the embryos after one day, and 103 chimeras were still alive after day 10. Nearly all had passed away by day 19, and the rest were destroyed on day 20. Number nine, mice with human brain cells. Eight years ago, researchers at Stanford University started an ambitious experiment. They began growing miniature, simplified versions of the human brain from stem cells inside a lab, then later injected that tissue into the brains of newborn rats. The results showed that the brain-like human tissue integrated with the rat tissue, then continued to mature. Those brain cells, in turn, seemed to influence the rat's behavior. The researchers injected the human tissue into the rats' somatosensory cortexes, regions that receive and process sensory information like touch or pain. After about two weeks of training, the rats began to lick a spout in search of water whenever the researchers simulated the brain neurons. They did this using blue light lasers. The researchers also used a puff of air to prod the rats' whiskers, then observed how the human neurons responded. We found that human neurons respond very quickly after we stimulated the whiskers. In fact, more than 70% of the human neurons were engaged in some form of activity within a second or so of that simulation. So that tells us that they're probably connected. Sergio Posca, one of these studies authors and a professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at Stanford said on a call with reporters. Number eight, a mouse virus with human genes. In collaboration with a team from Harvard Medical School, researchers led by Pedro Simus and Kenneth Kay studied a protein of the Kaposi virus vital for maintaining infection. Without this protein called LANA, the virus loses its ability to cause cancer. The team found that when LANA is cloned into a virus similar to Kaposi but which infects mice instead of humans, it preserves its functionality. This finding came as a surprise since it was assumed that as a consequence of the evolutionary divergence between human and other animal viruses, the genes that code for LANA could not be switched. However, the work now published in PLOS Pathogens showed that even though there are more than 60 million years of evolutive divergence between the human sarcoma herpes virus and its rodent homologue, LANA's functional mechanisms are preserved. These findings allowed researchers to create a chimera virus, a mouse virus with a human viral gene that can be used to test molecules that inhibit human LANA protein in an animal model of disease, treating not only human herpes virus infection, but also its associated cancers. These molecules will hopefully be used in the future as substances to treat Kaposi virus associated lymphomas. Number seven, human pig hybrid. In a remarkable, if likely controversial feat, scientists announced that they have created the first successful human-animal hybrids. The project proves that human cells can be introduced into a non-human organism, survive, and even grow inside a host animal, in this case, pigs. This biomedical advance has long been a dream and a quandary for scientists hoping to address a critical shortage of donor organs. What if, rather than relying on a generous donor, you could grow a custom organ inside an animal instead? That's now one step closer to reality, an international team of researchers led by the Salk Institute reports in the journal Cell. 
The team created what's known scientifically as a chimera, an organism that contains cells from two different species. In the past, human-animal chimeras have been beyond reach. Such experiments are currently ineligible for public funding in the United States. So far, the Sulk team has relied on private donors for the chimera project. Public opinion too has hampered the creation of organisms that are part human, part animal. But for lead study author John Wu of the Salk Institute, we need only look to mythical chimeras, like the human bird hybrids we know as angels, for a different perspective. In ancient civilizations, chimeras were associated with God, he says, and our ancestors thought the chimeric form can guard humans. In a sense, that's what the team hopes human animal hybrids will one day do. Or are they just playing God? Number 6. Mice with Human Booties The first working replacement anal sphincters have been built in a laboratory and tested on mice. Now, scientists hope the research will benefit humans with fecal and urinary incontinence because current methods used to repair internal anal sphincters such as skeletal muscle grafts, silicone injections, or mechanical implants have only had limited success. In essence, we have built a replacement sphincter that we hope can one day benefit human patients. This is the first bioengineered sphincter made with both muscle and nerve cells, making it pre-wired for placement in the body. Senior author Khalil N. Vitar, a professor of regenerative medicine at Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center's Institute for Regenerative Medicine, said in a Wake Forest news release, Scientists were able to make the bioengineered anal sphincters in about six weeks using human muscle and nerve cells. They found the sphincters were able to generate blood supply and work properly in mice. The investigators hope that their research will lead to a more effective treatment for humans because there is a high rate of weakened internal anal sphincters in older adults. Women who had episiotomies during childbirth can also be affected by this condition. It's weird, but it's for a good cause, so maybe it's not so bad. Number 5. Human-Rabbit Hybrid That's right guys, scientists in China in 2003 had for the first time used cloning techniques to create hybrid embryos that contain a mix of DNA from both humans and rabbits, according to a report in a scientific journal that has reignited the smoldering ethics debate over cloning research. More than 100 of the hybrids made by fusing human skin cells with rabbit eggs were allowed to develop in laboratory dishes for several days before the scientists destroyed them to retrieve so-called embryonic stem cells from their interiors. Although scientists in Massachusetts had previously mixed human cells and cow eggs in a similar attempt to make hybrid embryos as a source of stem cells, those experiments were not successful. The vast majority of the DNA in the embryos is human, with a small percentage of genetic material called mitochondrial DNA contributed by the rabbit egg. No one knows if such an embryo could develop into a viable fetus, though some experiments with other species suggest it would not. And I already know what you guys are thinking. Stop. Judy Hopps is fictional. Don't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, human with animal organs. Stephanie Faye Beauclair, better known as Baby Faye, was an American infant born in 1984 with hypoplastic left heart syndrome. She became the first infant subject of a xenotransplant procedure and first successful infant heart transplant, receiving the heart of a baboon. Though she passed within a month of the procedure, she lived weeks longer than any previous recipient of a non-human heart. The procedure, performed by Leonard Lee Bailey at Loma Linda University Medical Center, was successful, but Faye passed away 21 days later of heart failure due to rejection of the transplant. The rejection is thought to have been caused largely by a humoral response against the graft, due to Faye's type O blood creating antibodies against the type AB xenograft. The blood type incompatibility was seen as unavoidable. Fewer than 1% of baboons are type O, and Loma Linda only had seven young female baboons, all of which were type AB, available as potential donors. A baboon heart was used as there was no time for a suitable human heart to be found. It was hoped that the transplant could be replaced by an allograft at a later date, before Faye's body began generating isohemagglutinins. But a suitable donor could not be found in time. Prior to the procedure, no infant heart transplant, even with human hearts, had been successfully performed due to a lack of infant human hearts. To address this issue, Bailey had become a pioneer in the research of cross-species heart transplants, which had included more than 150 transplants in sheep, goats, and baboons. Number 3. Pigs with Human Blood the embryos did not grow into part human piglets and the technique was far from perfect, the researchers reported in the journal Cell. And these are not the first animals that are part human, part animal. 
But it's the first time this particular technique has been used to make chimeras, animals with parts from two different species. The experiments being done by Juan Carlos Isbiza Belmonte at the Salk Institute in California and colleagues are controversial. The National Institutes of Health only proposed lifting its ban on funding such work pretty recently. The team followed guidelines issued by the International Society for Stem Cell Research. Belmonte said the embryos are only grown long enough for different types of tissue to develop clearly. These particular embryos had some human muscle cells, for instance. There are sheep spliced with human genes that produce human proteins in their milk for treating a rare lung disease. Scientists have created pigs that produce human blood and injected human stem cells into paralyzed mice to help them walk again. Animal-human hybrids can be used as sources for organs to transplant, as we talked about before, for blood and for immune system products. According to the United Network for Organ Sharing, 118,744 people were on waiting lists for an organ transplant in 2017. Organs with human DNA would be more likely to survive transplant into a person. Number two, the Vicanti mouse. The Vicanti mouse was a laboratory mouse that had what looked like a human ear growing on its back. The ear was actually an ear-shaped cartilage structure grown by seeding cow cartilage cells into biodegradable ear-shaped mold and then implanted under the skin of the mouse with an external ear-shaped splint to maintain the desired shape. Then the cartilage naturally grew by itself within the restricted shape and size. The splint was removed briefly to take the publicity pictures and is very controversial. The e-mouse, as it became known, was created by Charles A. Vacanti in the Department of Anesthesiology at Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School. Number one, human Z. There have been no scientifically verified specimens of a human-chimpanzee hybrid, but there have been substantiated reports of unsuccessful attempts to create one in the Soviet Union in the 1920s and various unsubstantiated reports on similar attempts during the second half of the 20th century. Ilya Ivanov was the first person to attempt to create a human-chimpanzee hybrid by artificial insemination. Ivanov outlined his idea as early as 1910 in a presentation to the World Congress of Zoologists in Graz. In the 1920s, Ivanov carried out a series of experiments culminating in inseminating three female chimpanzees with human sperm, but he failed to achieve a pregnancy. These initial experiments took place in French Guinea. In 1929, he attempted to organize a set of experiments involving non-human ape sperm and human volunteers, but was delayed by the passing of his last orangutan. The next year, he fell under political criticism from the Soviet government and was sentenced to exile in Kazakhstan. He worked there as a Kazakh Veterinary Zoo Technical Institute and passed away of a stroke two years later. Thanks for watching.